So, for okay. sure. Where are you located? I am in Rockville, Maryland. Okay. Um, like 12 miles outside of Washington, D.C. So it's in the suburbs of D.C. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I've been up in that area. I, I've, I found the subway system and just the way D.C. works to be very intuitive. I liked it. It is, yeah. I'm in the suburbs. I got got tired of the city. I, I worked there for like over 15 years. Now I'm enjoying being a soccer mom. <laughs> there you go. Right on. Well, I'm yeah. in Kansas City, Missouri, so oh, I'm, okay. I'm in the center of the map. But, um, you know, I want to kick off our conversation here with what we lived through for the last three years with COVID. How did you get yeah. through that time period? And how did it change you now that we've kind of entered this post-pandemic era? Sure. It, it was uh, in terms of writing or in general? In general, just how your life was impacted. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when COVID started, uh, my contract for my previous job ended. Um, so it was not like it was just not because of COVID, but it happened because, you know, it just happened to be COVID. So I was home and with three kids. So it was it was really tough because the, the three children were... Um, one of them was two and the others were like 10, no less, they were not um, eight. And it was it was really hard because uh, there was no school. Um, you know, we were all home, we were all scared. We didn't know what to do. So it, um, it definitely had an, an, an impact. And I, I like most of what I did was I tried to hold the family together, but then eventually I, um, a year into COVID, I decided to start my own business, which I did, which is called Suburban Media Group. And it focuses on providing content for brands. Um, and it's also the business in which the umbrella where I publish my books as well. So I think that's the way you can say I decided to to pivot, which is, um, you know, now I am a free agent, which is nice. Uh, I have a number of, of clients. I focus on my writing. Um, yeah. And, and you know, <clears throat> the business are, is, is growing. It started pretty small, uh, but now I'm getting more clients, more work. Um, and you know, my, my short stories are being published, um, speaking with an agent for my second novel. Um, so yeah, it's good. Excellent. So let's get to the heart and soul of what you do on a daily basis. I'm sure. going to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day. One of the kids okay. looks up and says, what do you do for a living? How do you answer that child? I'm a writer. Uh, so it's what I do is I wake up in the morning, I drop off my kids to school and then I sit behind the computer and I, so there's different type of writing. I either write for clients uh, for, and my clients include uh, writing their newsletters. So for this morning, for example, I was talking with a client about their newsletter, you know, they wanted to change stuff. Uh, I also, I do ghost writing uh, for uh, a company that writes memoirs. So that's another client. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and I also teach. Uh, some people ask me how, to, like, like, I'm sort of like a book coach. Uh, if they want to get started in the publishing, I also run a podcast where I talk with authors and writers. And I also have my own um, uh, creative writing, which includes my novel. So uh, I'm, I'm talking with the editor, uh, you know, back and forth to review the manuscript. So, yeah, so I spend my day writing and reading, of course, because you can sure. be a writer without without reading. Of course. So when you were growing up, what was your dream in the third grade? What did you want to be when you grew up? Was it always writing? Yes. Uh, and uh, I majored in journalism, actually. So I have a master's in journalism. Um, so I, I think back and then for me, when I thought of writing, I thought of being published in newspapers. And so uh, I went to journalism, I think, you know, like I wanted more of a serious career. Um, I still I still write for publications, uh, you know, like uh, news articles and features. But most of what I do is more on the creative side of writing rather than the reporting. But I've, I worked as a journalist for over 20 years as well. <clears throat> so let's go back to where you were born and raised and how these seeds got into you to want to write and to become sure. who you are today. Sure. So I was born in the Middle East. I was born in Amman, Jordan. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> since I was, <clears throat> sorry, since I was really young, um, 
I loved reading and and I used to read and write in my native language, which is Arabic. And, and I realized in school, whenever there was a writing essay, the teachers were uh, like always very impressed and they would give me A pluses and they say, and I remember one teacher said is like, if there was something higher than an A plus, we would have given you. And that like stuck with me. Um, and And I think this began because I loved reading. I loved reading mystery books, fantasy and, and stuff like that. And then from that, I realized that, you know, writing is really what I like to do and I'm good at it. Uh, so in my late teens, I started uh, um, sending articles to newspapers in Jordan and they published them. And then, um, and then I went to school and I continued working uh, for uh, newspapers and publishing. And then as soon as I graduated from my undergrad, I started working at um, a digital news uh, organization where I used to write news. And I also had my own column where I used to publish um, funny articles about living in, in Amman, Jordan in the late 90s, early 2000s. And then I got a scholarship to go to London, um, to the City University of London uh, in England and I got my master's in journalism and then went back started working for a newspaper then I I was located I was uh, I went to Doha Qatar worked for Jazeera for a while came back to the I then came to the US worked for a number of organizations and um and meanwhile I continued to publish uh short stories and um, and work on novels. And I published a novel in 2019, and I am putting the final touches on a three book series of um, its urban fantasy. Okay. So, who's been kind of an inspiration, role model, hero for you in your life? As uh, authors or um, in general, uh, just anybody that's inspired <clears throat> you to be who you are. I uh I admired a lot of of uh, immigrant writers in in the U.S. So there is this Chinese author. Yeah, I think if I spell her name right, if I pronounce her name right, Yun Li, I think. Uh, and I read her story once in the Washington Post. And what I loved about her story is when she came to the U.S., she barely spoke English, and uh, she had a Ph.D. in I think chemical engineering or something. And then she quit all of that and she pursued her love of writing. And it was based on the Chinese American experience. And I love that because, uh, you know, I have a similar experience, not uh, as an immigrant. Um, and I remember I bought her book of short stories and I just loved them. And I tried to imitate that that style and now if you follow her trajectory she's extremely successful so I loved the humble beginning I loved how she started from barely speaking in English to being a New York Times bestseller so you know um, I, I love that and uh, I always remember that profile of her in the Washington Post. So what was the first piece that you wrote professionally where you thought wow I'm here I've arrived this is my this is my life uh, it was a letter to the editor in a newspaper in Jordan called the Jordan Times. And it was about uh, experience that I had applying for a job as a teenager. Um, and they refused to give me the job because it was at night, the night shift. And they said, according back then, I think maybe the rules changed, but they said the, the, the Jordanian labor laws does not allow women to work at night. And I was like, I have no problem working the night shift. You know, <clears throat> my parents have no problem. It's fine. Let me do it. And it's like, oh, we can be violating the law. So um, I was really mad. Uh, and so I wrote that letter and um, the publisher published it. And then people started responding to it. And that's when I realized that I actually have a voice and maybe my voice can make a difference. And so that was the first let's say, professionally published piece. I think I was 18, something like that. You know, I did the same thing before I got into journalism. I was just thinking about that. I wrote about a pitcher. His name was Dwight Gooden for the Mets. Okay. And he had a lot of problems throughout his career. I actually just went to a press event. He was my hero. 
and okay. I just met him and he was wonderful. But I remember it took me a lot. It took me a long time to remember that was the beginnings. The first job that I ever had at the University of Missouri, Kansas City at their newspaper. That's all I had was a published letter letter to the editor. And it was so cool. Yeah. You know? yeah. Th- yeah. That's so great. You said because there are these beginnings. And I and I now that I look back on it, he was probably like, this is all you got. <laughs> but that's all I had. But that's that that's a professional ambition. I mean, you're not you're not playing around if you're writing a letter to a newspaper and you want to get your opinion out there. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. correct. That's interesting. So of all the people, whether it's writing or otherwise, that exist on the planet right now, if you could have a dream interview or a dream meeting, who would it be? Stephen King. Yeah. I mean, the reason is because uh, uh, I've actually I've seen him live in DC. He came and he was just so down to earth, so humble, so um, inspiring. And I love his book on writing. Um, I love his books, of course. I read a number of them, and um, he's just an he's just a genius. And 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 I love that he always kept his ego in check. Yeah. <laughs> he's like the best probably selling author in the world and mm-hmm. and he never stopped for yeah. me he he keeps churning he keeps and they keep getting better and better he didn't like publish few books and it's like okay i'm done i made it no he just keeps he keeps doing it because he loves it and that's very inspiring and i loved how and he's still very down to earth and he responds to people on twitter uh-huh. he encourages people he lifts them up so he would be someone i would love to talk to tell him that I grew up in Jordan uh, and if, you know, we didn't have like many books in English back then. And a friend of a friend had a copy of of his books and she told me about him. And it was rare to find his books in the 80s in the Middle East. And then I, I just read the book and I just loved it. And I became obsessed with him and I started collecting his books uh, in any way or shape I could find them. I had to ask people who were traveling to Europe or to the US to bring me the books and I would <laughs> wait months to get them. So yeah, so that's probably someone I would I would love to talk to. I was just talking about him the other day. He's so prolific. Every novel is huge. Lots of things get made into movies and TVs. He's always relevant. He interacts with, and he actually puts out opinions that move, socially move things forward. You know, there's there's things that he is championing that he's very clear about. He's a really good guy. So he is, yeah, yeah he is. Yeah, uh, yeah. and I, I, plus because I saw him live and it was a dream come true. So he's like even more humble when you see him live. Right. Yeah. And, and isn't that cool to meet your heroes? Like when I met Dwight, he was such a nice guy. And they yeah. say don't meet your heroes because it could backfire on you. So, yeah. Yeah. It's always good if, if it's a good meeting. So what is your motivation? What is your ultimate motivator every day to get out of bed, to write, to do what you want to do and to accomplish what you want to get done? Yeah. Funny you ask because I was thinking about this the other day and I even wrote about it. But you know, when I was young and I first started writing and you always dream of like being the next uh, Stephen King or the next, uh, you know, uh, Anne Rice or whoever. But then uh, after I started publishing and I realized, you know, if I, that's really not my dream. This is like the icing on the cake. You know, if <laughs> by miracle I become the next Stephen King, it's fine. But For me, what matters after I think maybe reaching my age and realizing is that my work leaves an impact and changes lives. And whether it is one person or two person or three person, that for me is is important. So sometimes the feedback that I get on my first novel, you know, we didn't know anything about growing in the Middle East and your novel gave us this perspective or I never thought about, uh, you know, this from this point of view. You know, I always think about the main character or just small changes um, uh, this is what I look for because as I said you know the grand you know this in the scheme of things you know being a bestseller novel uh, novelist is you know great to to have as a dream but that's really not my ultimate goal it's just the icing on the cake so if you have a dream tonight, you run into like a 20 year old version of yourself and you could give that young version of you a piece of advice based on the wisdom mm. you've gained in your life. What advice would you give your younger self? 
Yeah, for me, the advice is not to be bogged down by talent or whether you have it or not, because you realize is that the best publishers, the best musicians, the best authors, the best anything is not the most talented one, but the most disciplined and the most, the most consistent ones. So consistency trumps talent. So you can be, you know, you can be Shakespeare, but if you're not consistent, you're not going to produce anything. And on the flip side, those who are consistent, keep getting better, keep, uh, you know, 100, 1% uh, better every day until they uh, uh, become really good. So for me, having these thoughts uh, paralyzed me in many aspects of, of my life, which is I'm not good enough. I'm not talented enough. I also play the violin like I'm not I don't have the perfect pitch or I don't you know, like I can't just pick up the violin and I like play everything perfectly. And that really uh, frustrated and bugged me down. And it was kind of a mental block and it caused that imposter syndrome. But then when you realize it's the consistency is putting the 10,000 hours that makes you a better writer, a better musician. And it really, I wish I'd known this in my 20s. Yeah. So for someone that clearly has a sense of wonder, if you could see any event in the history of the world with your own eyes, where would you go? Mm -hmm. What would you love to see? Back in time? Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah. Uh, is it? Does it have to be positive or negative? It can be anything. Uh, I would have loved to see the the Berlin Wall being torn down. I saw it on TV, and I I still remember. Uh, this happened what in the nineties, the early nineties. Eighty nine. Eighty-eight, eighty-nine, I believe it was, something like that. Yeah, and I, I remember I saw it in TV on TV. I was I was pretty young. Um, but I still remember it. It's probably like, you know, one of those antenna TVs that you have like to yeah. shake to make it work. Yeah. And uh, but I I still remember those scenes and I, I wish I was there to actually witness it, to witness yeah. the euphoria because that was a very pivotal moment in in humankind and in, in history. So what are you the proudest of? Of everything that you've done professionally, what are you the proudest of? Professionally? Um, I think I'm, I'm proud of not giving up, especially when in you're the creative field. Um, you know, there's so many obstacles that you can face, especially... Uh, in, in publishing and writing because it's it, you know the competition is really high so there's always rejections there's always bad reviews there's a like a publisher that you know you don't agree with there is um you know whatever uh bad comments on social media there is there's there's always things that happen when in your creative field because you know people have opinions and you're um you can't please everyone and uh, I just I just kept at it, and uh, no matter what happens, is if, if like let's say, um, you know, no publisher or agent is gonna pick this this. I mean, I don't care. I'm gonna self publish. I'm gonna pick myself, and it's the idea when you have that mentality, especially now because there's so many avenues for self publishing, and just uh, uh, realizing that rejection is part of the journey. The journey and uh just uh like maybe you can mourn rejection for a day or two and then you have to stand up and lick your wounds and keep going i think that's for me what i'm proud of because i, th I think many people would have given up a uh, long time ago so everyone out there has a perception of you family friends fans of your writing but ultimately you're in control what mm -hmm. is your perception of you who do you think you are Oh, I uh okay. I think um friendly. Um, I like people. I like to be around them. I I um and I value family and relationship. I think at the end of everyone's life, that's what really matters on on your deathbed. You're not gonna worry about uh you know PowerPoint presentations or whatever. So I think that's for me is is number one is I'm like family and and friend oriented. Uh, I'm also disciplined. I like to work hard. Uh, I'm creative. Um, 
I I always seek knowledge. Uh, I'm always thirsty for thirsty for knowledge. I I'm a student for life. I feel like if even if I live to be eighty, I would still trying to learn new stuff. Um, um, I believe I have uh, some level of intelligence that helped me achieve a number of things. But again, that's not really what matters. What matters is the the discipline and the mindset. Um, and yeah. <laughs> that's my perception of my my myself so what's been the best advice that you've ever gotten that's that's kind of resonated with you in your life yeah is to write every day uh, rain or shine uh and to treat your writing as a job so uh, the idea of i'm waiting for the muse or for the inspiration or i have writer's block you know these they just they just only distraction and these are excuses you give yourself not to do it so just wake up and start writing uh because uh you cannot edit uh, an empty canvas so just pick your sweet stop uh, sweet spot during the day and especially if you're working on a on a book or a novel you cannot just wait for the inspiration and i think that's for me was life changing because i was always under the impression is i used to be under the impression as you know you'd be like sitting somewhere in a cabin and then the inspiration come and you stay up all night and then you finish the whole manuscripts and then it's like the the next you know the great american novel and that that just does not happen it's it's work it's consistency so if anyone wants to pick up your books, learn more about you, where's the best place for everybody to go? Uh, my website, natashatimes.com. Um, I also give some free stuff there. Uh, and uh, my books are on Amazon and, and I'm on social media, Twitter, Instagram. You know, uh, I have my, also my own podcast, Read and Write with Natasha. So, you know, they, I, I can easily be found. <laughs> Excellent. Natasha, thank you so much for your story, for your time. I really appreciate it. Best of luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely.